Obama, Bama, yeah, Bama, Obama, Big Ben, Obama, when I brought a baby and cover for me, Ray, Bama. seen this colorful fabric worn at a wedding, at a graduation ceremony, or on the front page of the Vogue magazine, or perhaps on the Louis Vuitton runway show. But the real question is, where did this colorful fabric originate from? West African cultures have been weaving textiles. There have been several origin stories about this particular textile called kente. But according to the Ashanti tribe in Ghana, kente was first developed by people from a town called Bonre during the reign of Osei Kofi Tutu I. Bomre is a town in Ghana, located in Adrisu, within the Ashanti region. According to their cans, this is where Kente originates from. I'm uh, continue for my name is my fancy in fee at your son, Etsy. Thirty years, thirty years, but on thirty years. I'm a Kosua, Medasuni Weaver, I'm a woman. A Juma, my fancy, a work for me fancy. You so free, you're more for broom, a bra, as a Bema beer will feel good, Jama, over Ben Papa. I want an Abema, and I over Umi Abema, and I was down for Berma be, because a Juma in Pimpino, a Juma for a Mema and Casa. A Juma friends, a work for me fancy. In see, my papa be here, and I'm so so or Mrs. Mabu room, and I'm so near to us. When I found out um, Ghana were promoting kente weavers with disabilities, it made me so happy because I've always said your disability should never be a barrier to your success. I met a kente weaver, his name's Kwame, and he's been weaving kente for so many years. Kwame has a disability, he's deaf but he's not allowed this disability to get in the way of him contributing to the African textile industry. My name is Etuahere Kwame Emmanuel. I live in Adawumase. I have been weaving since 2005. My interest in weaving came from observing other people weaving. Also, when I was young, I tried to design my own things. I developed that interest at a very young age. These are some of the things that encouraged me to learn kente weaving. I have been creating many, many items. Items such as sandals and other creative things that people use African fabric for. Things that people like to create using African fabric. Then I know me noa no more ye and ya four and ye fair bar con cre go a meal and our tack by no more ye a queer four no mu care you mono omu my dick as a pan or more ye pie say or me a bomb for hunting. Should you a hunting or man nanti in room is our bomb for the Indian just say you can be a hunt hunters and I say be a hunting or do an em room maybe or searching for bush meat. Ah, 
ba kutu ne ni ko hu se kokonanse America spider kokonanse wo me fa se wonyu ne tintan e wo so nti e bra mu hu se kokonanse yanyu ne tintan no sa ta ne ne mbi biya ni wo no nti e mi dia si no mi afo ye se do ye pese ye bi ye bi bi free de ananse ye bai nti e mi dia si na na se ntempana na na wo ma ya se so de wo ngwa mu wo e di ni ka e ba fie e ba bo ye na na ma mani e wo ba ye no wo mu de amani e so bo na na se na na se ni se na wo de se ku ngwa me ku hu ya ku hu kokonanse wo nwe ne tintan nti ne wo ne de na akwa se e du ba biya me fa se e so mo sa ko second day mo ko host e sa ko tena se e ko hwe de ko konanse o ye o mo ko ne ko konanse ampa ni ko to do o ni en ten time o even in web nti enye second day na no mo start ye bibi ani e to so ko so be se bo so me be se me ensa ansa na ni wachi no o mo sa ba ye am to mo ba fie bia na ye se adun to to a o mo ti adun e ko e be fa se be bibi sa ta na mati ye bia ni o se cotton we young and as a circle na second one no nti e ko ba se okay the first option na o beti mi start ya na se di di ko beti ma ye se ye de um raffia material this bamboo stick e be start aye bibi nti wo hwe e ko ye fa so nya e di kentena e ye true our local basket contain e ye be nya kente free ye to mo start the bamboo stick e sha se ye weaving e ye nti e start with um first procedure no first procedure ti ye hu se no ye nu kentena ade se ye pen ntoma ye nyo so ye nya no ntoma pote ye benya bi bi e be use as bundle nti no wetin na se ade ye de tu en se se watch nti no wetin o mo sa adwene hu se no ye nya wooden structure bi na material no ye mfa bi sin sen so to mo de bi sin sen so ha ne fan se ye vena asasin ntoma nti asasin ntoma no ye de stick prior aba ane anwuno ade no kaka kaka store first dey dey can dey to so me dey hu say me na the same thing sir you ain't mean come to mama dey you you see and i'm say now when he when he order yan no and abobi answer the first what fine pardon am i obi ade ni ni dey e be e be bo nti e ko ba say say e ka ba ko ni dey ni boom e ka bo ni hu say no say it me e ye bibi ti say a wooden machine i e fine say dey ni hu ya in say dey ya e be ti me an we can tell o mu every country has fabrics east africa west africa north africa there are fabrics everywhere but what is so special about kinte is the influence it has on the world i say nintia sie ana say asetia ye say en satia en satia en ha en satia nya nya president no dikan ye prime minister dr kwame nkoma woni ne hokani fatia do you have design we ya able bia be hu design we ya na si chire boss wo ka tete si chire no boss boss no and ketin ketin no no ale aye no wa se no we ya fat ya ntoma aye sa ya ile to e ma mpanyi ne ho kani aye fa ne fat ya fata kwa me ntoma na fat fat ya fata ntoma design ni ni do wa ya de bia to to eni ntini ya kuku dam fo e wo e wiase afa na nyina because e wo dwisi so aye de bi to be printing Former U.S. President Bill Clinton, you designed the way a friend of his used to air Clinton from her. Now, then time, no, a black Clinton, you know, started here, no. Now, electricity, me, you could be me. And see, a minute we are, you know, pannier, nado, and then next, a stick it together. Near and to Miss and to Mano Pofanancasa, and send in your cloth. Now, you will say, nado, no, next, because before I say about Copa Batana, I the pannier. E be sina no kaka 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 ne di be na wotwe ni na wotwe ti ne e ko be tu is e ti e bra ye nya le ti 1992 no machine was being introduced a be fun fidi e o mo di bi ba ha se ti e hu se no with machine we didn't see my best of three minutes and at some means e be ti me apama wi fast one thing i love about africans especially ghanaians they love their culture if you go to ghana ghana tourism the way they promote ghana it's just amazing everywhere you go you will find kinte from the airport from all the tourist attractions you will definitely find this fabric weaving kinte has done a lot for me we have many many types of kinte weaving when the foreigners come to ghana and purchase from us it helps us make very good profit 
Also, I want to encourage my deaf people that it's not only hearing people that can learn how to weave. Deaf people can also learn how to weave kente. You can become very experienced. When you pass Adawomase, we have some there, and Bonre, we also have some there. As a deaf person, you could establish yourself without depending on other people. I went to the British Museum and I saw Kinte displayed there. I was so, so happy because it made me proud of my ancestors to know that their hard work, you know, is now being celebrated all the way from Ghana to British Museum, you know, and it's, it's so amazing. I met a man, um, his name's Duncan, and he's been one of the distributors to these museums, not only here, but in America as well. What I have is vintage West African textiles, but we're going to concentrate on the Ghanaian ones. Yeah. So if we start over here, and um, this is like my indigo section, and indigo is the main natural dye that they had in West Africa for dyeing okay. cotton. Yeah. Wow. Um, most of the other colors are imported dyes or imported threads. Okay. But we have um, indigo and white painted gloves down here. Yeah. And how long have they, these been here? Do you get them um, sent over from Ghana? I, I go up and down to Ghana myself oh, and nice. also people send things send over. Them. So That's I wonderful. try and go every few months. Okay. Um, these are also mainly Kente. Yeah. Um, as, as are these, these are Airway Kente. Or are these, these are also Airway. <laughs> okay. These, and then at the top are Shanti. Oh wow. There's also two different sizes of cloths. So you have men's cloths and women's cloths. Mm -hmm. The men wear one big cloth, yeah. yoga fashion, as you know. Yeah. Uh, whereas women would wear two. There's one as a skirt and yeah. one, uh, but just two smaller pieces. Um, over here we have women's airway cloths. Wow. And we have some more Ashanti cloths. Ashanti, yeah. And then this is also, this is an Ashanti women's cloth. Yeah, I recognize Ashanti because I'm actually Ashanti, my parents. Uh, yes. So I definitely noticed that one. Okay. <laughs> so, there's a different color palette yeah so we put that next to those since for the ashanti ones you normally have the red and the yellow and the green okay. not always but and as we've seen there's also blue and white ones but whereas the airway colors are more varied okay yeah i can uh, see you know there's a, a blue one there's a red and black one yeah dark blue one and the weaving style is different as well, well with the airways the technique is the same okay um so I don't want to get into the yeah. details of weaving technology and things like that. <laughs> but you know, they're all woven in narrow strips that are yeah. sewn edge to edge, as opposed to kind of the big printed ones like your, your head wrap. Of course, yeah. Um, the technique is the same. The color palette is different. Airway weavers use more cotton, whereas mm. the shanty weavers used to use silk, but from around the 1930s, they okay, used they synthetic changed. silk. Yeah. Um, yeah. So rayon, things like that. Yeah. So it has this more silky feel. And then when you get into the details of the cloth, on Ashanti cloths, what, what we have on all these cloths is, is usually an alternation between a block here and then a little pattern in the middle and another block there. So it's like a pair of blocks of a little pattern. Yeah. On Ashanti Kente cloths, these patterns are always, always geometric. Mm. So. Wow triangles you know interlocking if we open this out we can see a bit more variation yeah, of that i can hold help you hold it um, so you see variations on kind of geometric patterning yeah okay so airway weavers also did that but they also also did things like if you look on here you can see a little animal yeah here you can see a bird sitting on something so any cloth that's got figurative patterns on most likely airway is going to be airway okay. well not any cloth in africa but any cloth in ghana that has yeah. is going to be airway okay yeah so here you can see like two birds yeah and some other people over here somewhere um, so those are the main those are kind of look you see some little people here yeah yeah i can see it so ashanti weavers didn't do that yeah yeah so that's something that's Shows the difference actually yeah. between the Ashanti yeah. and the Ewe. Yeah. Wow. So what got you so interested in, you know, African textile and oh, kente fabric? Oh, me personally. Um, well, 
I, when I first sort of left university, I, I worked in banking. Okay. And you'll not be surprised to hear I was extremely boring. <laughs> um, so I, I gave that up and I went back to university and I did a, a master's and then I did a PhD. Yeah, and, I heard about the PhD actually. And bit, how was that? It was, well, it was, it was a good idea at the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, and it was about Yoruba Ashokia weaving in Nigeria. Oh, wow. Um, so I lived in Nigeria for a couple of years. Mm. And I had a nice Nigerian lady. Yeah. Um, That's so, wonderful. That's so impressive, uh, honestly. Yeah. When I finished, I, I faffed around a bit. And, um, yeah. Then I decided to um, try and make a living by selling selling mm. textiles. Yeah. How, how much would one um like the price how much would one be sold sold for honestly it varies mm. so much depending on the on the piece yeah of course so there are pieces of cloth that it's very hard to, you know we say you, know, yeah. you couldn't give it away yeah. there's pieces of cloth that no one wants to buy of course um or if someone will buy it eventually yeah. which but, ones sell the most um so price can vary from 50 pounds to 5,000 pounds Ooh. depending on the piece yeah okay and um, yeah one thing I try and do is to or have done over the last 20 plus years is to yeah. develop a kind of a connoisseurship of these things so yeah. that I'm not just going to the market and you know I go to Ghana to look for things and people yeah, say that's things. really like, good I'm not just going and filling my bags up with the first yeah. things I see yeah I'm looking through hundreds and hundreds of things and wow. picking out how work. long would it normally roughly take you when you go out there and you're doing your research and you're well well, well i mean I, I i'm limited by what time i can spare i mean mm. i have to live there if i could yeah. but um there are there are dealers there's about five or six all men actually five or six men in Accra and in okay. kamasi who mm. deal in seriously in old textiles okay wow so um they are going around and people looking for things and people are bringing things so if yeah. people are in a village and they, yeah. they need money then the roof falls off in their house or they yeah. need money for school fees and they have an old okay. cloth they know they can sell it yeah. or if you know grandpa dies then amongst all his mm. stuff yeah they, it's like uh, a legacy they yeah, pass it on they pass it, it on in the family and there might yeah. be three cloths but 22 wow. people that yeah it's amazing honestly so they may have a family meeting and decide they want to sell it and divide mm. the money up or whatever and then there are people locally who mm. they know there'll be someone in the next town who buys old things yeah. so they'll call him and he'll come and buy it from mm. them and take it to a car and sell it to one of these guys yeah wow they'll send me amazing. a photo you know so yeah. these days it's all whatsapp and things like that as yeah. well no, it's amazing. It, I feel like my ancestors are here with me because <laughs> they used to wear, you know, these yeah, these cloths, yeah. these fabrics, and it's it's amazing. And this is so impressive, honestly. honestly I mean, I, very I, impressive. I, I would like to see more people in Ghana. Yeah. yeah. Excited about old ones of these. You know, obviously yeah. people wear new ones. The brand for modern ones. Yeah. Ceremonies and um, yeah. As an art historian, one of the things that interests me is how the designs change and things like that. Oh, 100 percent. Yes. But it's also important to keep. The old ones. Contact with old ones and a record yes. of old ones. I mean, yeah. there, there are a few collectors in Ghana. Yeah. Um, when Which I, would be your oldest um, fabric here, would you say? My oldest Ghanaian fabric at the moment would be probably this piece. Yeah. It's, um, okay, yeah. See the patterns here. Yeah, there, there, there are pattern is more simple. Yeah. There, on this one, there are three of these weft blocks with two patterns in between. It tends to be a sign of earlier pieces. Yeah. There are other, and with the airway ones in particular, close from the 19th century were, I think, quite a lot more varied than the 20th century ones. Okay. Um, I, there's a collector here in London who I've been working with making a collection of early airway cloths. Okay. Yeah, we hope maybe we'll be able to write an article, maybe some kind of article about it. Yeah. Like that. Um, Amazing. There Amazing. are cloths in museums in Europe that have acquisition dates. Yeah. 
I think there's one in the BM that they got in 1860. Yeah, I did go to the British Museum and I did see Kinte there, which was really nice to see. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if it's still displayed there now. I think so, they're not very quick at moving things around. (laughs) There's one with uh, Ella Nazi sculpture, woman sculpture, and then a cloth behind it. I actually got that cloth from me. They got that cloth from you? Yes, oh wow, yes, impressive. Yes. Um, so do so museums normally contact you? Yeah, yeah, well, I have to contact them. Okay. Well, sometimes they come to me, but mainly I, I contact people. Or I, I have people that I'm working with that are building collections and things like that. So mainly American museums, actually. But, oh wow. Um, there's quite a lot of cloths from, from me and the British Museum in the... Um, we say just say Bromley in Paris, there's a big ethnographic museum in Paris. Really like um, I've like, written several books, yeah. but this is the latest and best one, which is um, African textiles. just called African Textiles. Um, it's got a Central African section and an East African section by other people, but yeah. the West African one's by me. And there's a for the Ghana sec- the Kente section. The Kente section is a bit further on in the UK still holding out and that's heavy. Yeah, it's uh, quite a heavy book, isn't it? <laughs> yes. So this is already one of the oh, wow. cloth. Lovely. Let me find you that one. This is a really nice one as well. This is in a collection in Ghana, which I think is good too. This is my Baba Amadou has a big collection. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I love this pattern, it's very creative and yeah. lovely. So what you see on really top ones is this great improvisation of design. Yeah, mm-hmm. wow. And each of these little patterns, what they mean is a, a complex issue, but they, they, they're like, for people who are deeply knowledgeable about mm. the culture, they can talk about these designs yeah. and say that, you know, this, this, me, this the meaning behind something it. Something like that. Yeah. So the individual motifs can have some kind of meaning, but okay. the whole thing is not a text, so you can't kind of read yeah, down of here. That it's a book. Um, it doesn't work that way. But, yeah. you know, in many Ghanaian cultures, people, yeah. you had things like speaker stuffs with a little motif on the top, and mm. you had gold weights and things like That's that. That's wonderful. People used visual imagery to talk it's about. Quite to talk about yeah. where could I get a copy change. of this um, I, it's available from Amazon Amazon okay on either online definitely gonna get a copy okay yeah I've seen these pictures up here look like a Ghanaian chief or um, um, actually is it he's in Togo but yeah oh, okay. is it a chief Togo. or an elder yeah Togo um, and Ghana yeah very close yeah yeah, yeah. Sure. So yeah, it's the same man in the both pictures. On the on the left, he's wearing an adinkra. Yeah. And on the right, an airway cloth. Of oh wow! Not Lovely. anything particularly distinguished, but uh, you know. And I, I keep them here partly because I like them, but also sure yeah. helps people to understand how the cloths are being. Yeah, the worn. difference between the airway and Ashanti. Yeah. Partly so that. Cloth, yeah. Also, you know, the adinkra designs. Then you know, modern kente. Mm. A lot of the, the upper and the modern Kente, they do big machine embroidery over the mm. designs and things, yeah. which is um, lovely. I don't think Kente will ever fade out because it's become part of the nation. Kente will develop over time, but it will be passed down to different generations. That's what makes it a legacy. <laughs>